Hello, and welcome to the YMCA of San Francisco's Classrooms for All. My name is Risha, and today we're going to be talking about connecting with nature inside your very own home using materials that are already familiar to you, and we're also going to be honoring the Lunar New Year. So we're going to learn about cheese making, and we're going to learn, we're going to learn about broom making. But as a way to begin this experience of acknowledging the land, and what it can create in the ways that we are amazed by it and connected to it at home. We also want to think about the land before us and the fact that this is the homeland of the Ramatosh Ohlone people. And I say that because I'm coming to you from the Embarcadero area of San Francisco. And if you're interested in learning more about the Ramatosh Ohlone people or about the native and indigenous history of the land where you are, you can go to native-land.ca. Okay. I always like to start my videos taking a nice deep breath so we can deep, breathe deep together. And as I breathe deep, I smell this incredible rosemary. Oh my gosh. This is an amazing herb. I know that it's rosemary because I've had a lot of practice gathering rosemary and um, you too can practice recognizing your herbs by noticing what's familiar in your kitchen cabinet. If you have some rosemary, rosemary in your home right now, you can actually go and sniff it and be refreshed. Mm, rosemary is said to stimulate the memory section of the brain. So if you are studying hard or you're trying to memorize a new friend's name, rosemary is a great herb to help you with that. Amazing. We're going to be using some of this. Let's start with making some cheese. <gasps> I know that the Chinese New Year is coming and it's the year of the ox. The ox is an amazing animal. It's a ruminant, which means that it chews its cud. So if you want to connect to the animal that is being honored for this Lunar New Year, you can also think about chewing and the way that your jaw could use some relaxation. Maybe you want to rub your jaw the way that feels good to you. A lot of us store tension up here in our, in our jaw. Mm. This is a great way to connect to nature. Remember how we are a part of it already. Mm, that feels great. So oxen are ruminants, just like cows. And in America, the standard milk that we get in the grocery store is from cows. So this might look familiar to you. In other countries, milk is transported with different containers. This is a plastic container. Um, maybe, it's, maybe you see milk transported or stored in different ways. Maybe it's stored in a plastic bag, or maybe it's stored in a natural material. Um, I know in some places in the world, they actually store the milk inside the organs of either the cow itself or the goat or another animal because those are, um, those are tough and uh, durable containers to transport liquid. Or maybe it's made entirely from a plant, like a hollowed out piece of wood or something else. But I just got this from the grocery store and this plastic actually was made from fossil fuels, which means that there's a limited amount of it on this planet. And so anytime I'm getting my milk um, in a plastic container, that means I have a double responsibility to make sure that I'm using that plastic in a way that is respectful and mindful. Here in San Francisco, we have an amazing recycling center where um, it's called Recology, and our system in the city is that we are able to just put our waste on the street in a container and it'll get picked up and moved to a facility where it will be broken down after it's been sorted. But that's a really energy intensive process. So if you're thinking of picking up um, a container of milk and you want to think about uh, making cheese with me today, we're going to also think about creative uses for this empty container. Maybe you want to wash it out and store water in it in your emergency kit. And then you can 
rinse it out every month or so, put fresh water in, use the old water to water your plants at home or maybe do some laundry, dump it right in the washing machine or hand wash some things that are more delicate. So there's lots of ways to reuse this before it demands more energy by being broken down and recycled. Oh my goodness, we're already connecting to each other and to our resources on this planet just by talking about the container that the milk comes in. Okay, so if you wanna make cheese with me, you will need milk. You will need at least a half gallon. This is one gallon. You will need vinegar. You'll need a cup of vinegar. You'll need salt. I like to put in a teaspoon of salt. And then you'll also need um, a sieve or a cheesecloth or bandana. You'll need a cooking pot for on top of the stove. And you'll need a pot to drain it into. You can also include herbs like rosemary that taste really good to you. Mm. As we make this cheese, I'm gonna also teach you how to make a coloring page, so how to keep track of your ingredients and your recipe. I have a piece of cardboard here. If you have cardboard at home, you could draw the recipe on here, on your cardboard. A lot of us are, are making purchases that are coming to our door via delivery right now, so you probably have a lot of cardboard that could be used. Or maybe you wanna use a paper bag. In my home, we cut the bottom off the paper bag to line our compost container. And then we put the whole thing into the large delivery compost bin. But that leaves us with a lot of paper tubes that we don't know what to do with. So this is a great opportunity for us to make use of this paper. This paper came from trees. Oh my gosh. A renewable resource if the forests are handled and maintained correctly. If you want to learn more about trees and about forest management, that's actually something you can study all the way through college and beyond. You can learn all about how to understand the way a forest behaves and how to plant trees and grow them and how to manage paper and recycle it too. All right, I have here a piece of paper that I can use. I'll save the rest of this for another time. That's so great. We're already, we're already minimizing our carbon footprint by reusing something before we try to break it down and recycle it. Okay, so let's draw what we need. We know that we need our milk. So I'm gonna eyeball this container here. What I like about drawing is that it's a wonderful, exciting way to see how my brain is going to connect to my hand. A lot of us have been spending time looking at screens. Maybe you're even looking at a screen to watch this. And that's great because it connects us. But it's also important for us to remember to connect to ourselves and take time away from the screen. So that's another reason why it's nice to draw this recipe with me. So we have our milk. You know, there are a lot of animals that produce milk. That's something that mammals do. So when we're thinking about the Lunar New Year and the oxen, we can think about all of its mam mammalian qualities. Maybe we'll talk more about that. We know that it chews its cud. We know that it produces milk, and that happens when it's given birth. Um, and then the body of the oxen gets the signal it's time to feed that infant calf, and it produces milk. So we have milk from a cow to make our cheese. Um, we also need our salt. Salt can come from a lot of different places on the planet. It can actually come from the ocean, from, from water. Or it can come from mines. You can actually mine salt. And because of the different minerals in the earth. Sometimes salt can be different colors. All right, got our milk and our salt. We also need vinegar. You can use a lot of different types of vinegar. Vinegar is a product that's created from fermentation. So you can have apple cider vinegar. That's fermented apple cider. 
or you can have uh, white wine vinegar that is white wine that has undergone <sighs> undergone a, a process of aging in a certain way that it that it has that vinegar taste so we need our milk we need our salt we need our vinegar Ooh, what else did I say we needed we needed our herbs we're gonna add those last and I think I'll draw this rosemary. Rosemary has these very thin leaves. I wonder if over time, the rosemary plant has adapted to have these thin leaves and woody stems in a particular way that helps it survive. Mm. Maybe even the smell is an adaptation of the rosemary. Okay, we have our starting ingredients. So the first thing you're gonna do to make your milk is ask for permission to use the stove top because we need to heat this milk up low and slow and I want everyone to be safe. So after you've washed your hands and you're ready to use the stove top, you put the milk into the cold pot and you wanna heat it slowly. Because milk has sugars, we don't want to heat it really fast. The sugars can actually burn. The sugars are crystals inside of the liquid that can burn. So we want to slowly heat it so that they melt instead of burning. So on my drawing, my recipe, I'm showing a pot, and I can even draw an arrow. I like to make my recipe drawings um, line drawings so that I can color them in later, but if you want to color in yours right now, you totally can. And yours does not have to look exactly like mine. In fact, I encourage you to make a version of this that works well for you. It's the great thing about art. It's yours. It's a special invention that's unique to you. Okay, step one. We are slowly heating our milk until it gets foamy and frothy. That entire time, we have to be stirring it. I'm glad I remembered this step because that reminds me of another tool we need, which is a, a spoon, a long handled spoon so that we can be safe while we're stirring. I like to use a wooden spoon. Um, I think because it helps me, again, connect to nature. But any spoon will do. You don't want to leave it in the pot alone. You don't want to leave that spoon alone. You want it to be, you want to be stirring um, slowly. You don't want to whip it up into a frenzy. You want to st slowly stir it and you wanna make sure to make contact with the bottom occasionally so you can scrape it off the bottom so that there's the milk proteins and sugars are not getting stuck and burnt to the bottom. You can even uh, trace uh, your name or the name of someone that you're gonna share the cheese with or maybe you can draw a design or a special word that's your special wish to bring into the cheese like love or health or care that's another great way for us to experience nature everywhere, is to practice our gratitude in every step of this cheese making process. So once the milk starts to get frothy and starts to move a little on its own, we don't want it to boil. We want it to just start to simmer. Then we're gonna turn the heat off and add our vinegar. So I'm gonna make a note on my recipe, my coloring recipe. Turn off when foamy and add our one cup of vinegar. I'm gonna draw the measuring cup of vinegar like that. 
And maybe you even want to um, label it with one cup. You can also try and experiment with um, adding different amounts of vinegar and seeing what happens. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. We have so much of this recipe already. <gasps> now when you add the vinegar, something very exciting is going to happen. There in the pot, a chemical reaction is going to occur right before your very eyes. And this is um, an amazing example of nature and science happening in your very own home. This chemical reaction that happens between the vinegar and the warm milk is going to pull the solids away from the liquids. Because when you get a container of milk, a lot of it is actually water. There's a lot of water in milk. But when you heat it up and allow it to be warmed, and then you add that acidic quality from the vinegar, that chemical reaction will allow you to see it start to clump up and get lumpy. And the liquid that separates out from the solids is called the whey. The whey. The whey and the curds will separate. Now sometimes if the milk is really, is, is skim milk, for example, there aren't gonna be as many proteins in the milk. But if you have full fat milk, you're going to see a different kind of separation. I personally recommend full fat for this recipe. So after you've added the vinegar, you gently stir, and then you're going to pour it, it out, of the, out of the warm pot. You might need a grown-up's help for this. This is when you strain the curds from the whey. If you have a strainer like this, that's really helpful. I recommend also lining it with either a cheesecloth or a clean bandana, or even I've used a clean t-shirt before as well. And what you can do is you can tuck your bandana into the sieve like this, and just let it rest on top of a big bowl. You want the bowl to be as, as big as the pot because a lot of that liquid's gonna come out. You don't want it to splash on you or someone else that's in the kitchen helping you. So this allows you to strain out the big cheesy particles and then the liquid, the whey from the vinegar and the milk, the whey is gonna strain out. So this is gonna be a very wet and a little stinky, but it'll be delicious in the end. So after you've strained it, you can actually use the liquid that's in the bowl, either for soup stock or there's even other recipes online that will, um, that will use whey to create a fermented product. And if you don't have vinegar, you can also use lemon juice for this. Maybe even orange juice, that's acidic too. Well, it's actually, it's actually basic. Yeah, there's acids and there's bases. That's a whole other video. But the point being that you can actually make use of the way that gets separated out from the cheese making as you continue making your cheese. So let's make our drawing reflect this process. You know what I've noticed? This part of the paper bag is not big enough for me to keep writing this recipe. We need more. I'm glad I saved this other piece because I'll make the rest of the recipe on here. Okay, so we put our bandana or our cheesecloth or our t-shirt into our strainer like that. And then we put it on a pot or a big bowl like that. This will be fun to color in later. Then we're going to carefully pour now the curds are gonna be kind of lumpy. I'm making some big splash marks because it can be a little splashy. So that's my impression. First you put the bandana on the strainer, on the pot, and then we're gonna slowly pour the cheese pot over those things. 
Ah, this comes the flavorful part. Now we get to add our salt and our herbs and our flavorings. So you have this lumpy bit of cheese, the curds, and you may decide to, at this point, dump this into a different bowl so you can mix it up, or you can mix it in the strainer bandana itself, that's okay too. So we strained our cheese, we've got our curds on the side. Let's add some salt and herbs. I like to cut my herbs up because I don't like a big bite of, I don't like a big bite of rosemary. I think it's too much. So I might rip little bits as I put them in. Or if you have a pair of scissors, you can cut them up. It's good to taste it a little as you add things. Maybe ask someone else to give it a taste, see what they think. Maybe put aside some and keep adding flavors to the rest. You, you can even separate it out into different small bowls and add different flavorings. Maybe you wanna try honey and raisins. Maybe you wanna try <gasps> chili flakes and garlic powder. Maybe you wanna try turmeric and paprika. There's lots of different options. And the great news is all of those are part of nature too. Those raisins came from a tree. They were grapes that dried up. That honey came from bees. All of those other spices were also coming from plants. Like the turmeric is from a root. The hot pepper flakes are from a pepper that grew in a pepper plant. So. Whatever you add to this cheese and make it yours to celebrate having a little bit of um, a little bit of Lunar New Year magic as a relative of the oxen, we can celebrate the cow and what it provides. But the important thing is that you've made something, maybe even with somebody that you care about, and you've also made yourself a fun recipe that you can color in. If you have, if you have cabinet knobs in your kitchen, you can even hang this up the next time you want to make the recipe so that it's hands-free. Um, and we've also managed to reuse some of this paper bag and we've celebrated a little bit of Lunar New Year in a delicious, in a delicious and tasty way. Okay, who's ready to make a broom? Now, this is important to do before the Lunar New Year. We don't want to sweep out any of our good luck. Instead, we want to make sure that we are sweeping out anything from the old year and leaving room for something new. But I wanted us to think about the common broom in our home and really start to ask ourselves where it came from. If you look at this broom, it has a few different materials on it that we can trace back to nature. This handle is made from wood, so it came from a tree somewhere, I'm not sure where. There's some metal wire around it here. There's some metal wire around it. And this, this metal had to be mined. I don't know if it was mined in this country or another one. Um, I'm not even sure what type of metal it is. Maybe it's aluminum, it's very um, easy to coil. And then there's some sort of plant matter here. It might actually be straw. And then there's some plastic rope down here. So this plastic, I know, came from fossil fuels. And then this is from a straw plant, most likely. If you've noticed that your broom is not cleaning the same way that it used to, you can actually trim your broom. So if you get permission from the grown-ups in your house, you can actually use a pair of sharp scissors or even some gardening shears, and you can straighten up the edge of your broom so that it sweeps like new. I have a really old broom at my house that's all slanted and we had to do this a few times to clean up our broom.
Look at that. Oh my goodness, so much better. That's fantastic. This place is gonna be tidy in no time. But you might be wondering, what is straw? Straw is actually a part of a grass plant. So if you have a broom made from straw, you have a bundle of grass on the end of a stick. You might be wondering, why is it called straw? Like the thing that I drink out of. Well, if you look at a straw that you drink out of, it's hollow and it's a tube. It's the same with the straw plants. It's actually the, the, the long hollow stem of this particular type of grass. And so a lot of people don't realize the top of that, the top of that plant can be harvested for grain. Maybe it's used for people, grain for your cereal, grain for that's ground up into flour for your delicious baking. Maybe it's grain that's been ground up and used in something that you ate today or maybe it's animal feed, but the long stem of that plant can be used to bundle together and make another product, which we have here. So if you wanna make your own, you can actually use dried grasses, or I thought it'd be fun for us to try to make brooms from other things as well. And I also brought this hat to showcase how this is another use of straw. Maybe you have a straw hat in your home, and if you have it, you can wear it with me for us to practice our straw, our straw appreciation component of the lesson. What a great way to start the new year. The Lunar New Year. Sweeping out the old, making way for the new. Now I have brought in some materials that might be good for a broom. If you get fennel in the store, it has these beautiful fronds. You can eat the bottom crunch, 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 so delicious. And you can eat, and you can try to maybe clean up your kitchen counter a little bit with this fennel brush, or maybe you, you can sweep some art across a page, um, or you can always put it into soup stock. That's what I like to do. Try to minimize the amount of compost waste that leaves my home. I'll put my food trimmings into a container in the freezer, and I will wait until that container is full of things like the top of my fennel or the tops of my carrots or the very ends of my onion, and then I'll make a soup stock from that. Very, very tasty, full of nutrients from the plants, but it's also fun to try and see what we can sweep up with this fennel as well. There's also all of this amazing rosemary. Maybe this would be good for sweeping. Hmm. It smells wonderful. Maybe I could sweep myself a little bit. Wow, sweeping myself full of amazing smells. Mmm. Maybe I'll, I'll sweep off all of the negativity that I don't want to bring into the Lunar New Year with me. <sighs> Fantastic. Leaving only the positive stuff that I want to bring into the New Year. Amazing. I also have some twine here. This is plastic twine. This was destined for the garbage. And I have some grasses. So these grasses were sticking through the fence in my garden and I felt like they were crowding out some of my other plants, so I decided to clip them. And then I thought, hey, maybe we could make a broom out of that. How cool is that? And it's gonna be a perfect opportunity to showcase whether any of these work because there's seeds everywhere on this table now. So, if you have some materials that you would like to make a broom with, maybe it's paper or maybe it's grasses, you can bundle them together and just try it out. Try sweeping up different corners of your desk or different corner of the of the kitchen counter. And now I'm going to show you how to make a paper broom. I'm going to use some of this paper bag. It's 
So if you would like to make a paper broom along with me, you can get a paper bag or some recyclable paper. You can get some glue or tape. You're going to need a pair of scissors and a moment of appreciation for the trees that this paper bag was made from. <sighs> okay. The first thing we're gonna do is make the handle of our tiny broom. So on this broom, we have a wooden handle. On our broom, we're gonna have a paper handle. So you'll want a long rectangle. I'm gonna use the base of this um, paper bag because it's already very folded over and stiff. Um, so we're gonna just roll it up or fold it up and you can do the same. And when you get near the end of your roll, like that, you're gonna put a little glue down so it stays all stuck together. Mine really wants to unravel. So if you're finding the same thing is happening for you, you're not alone. I think what I might do to try to encourage it to stay all stuck together is use a rubber band. That one broke. Let's use a different one. <laughs> you can also use a hair tie or some other elastic. Or if you have a um, if you have a bit of wire, a twisty tie from maybe a bundle of vegetables in your house. You can also secure it like that. Ooh, I kind of like that. Looks almost like a magic wand. Oh, this is exciting. Making something new together. Okay, so that's the handle of our broom. We're, all, we're ready to make the base of the broom. So, what really makes this work is that it has all these little fringy bits at the end. So we're gonna cut some fringe into our paper. So it'll catch all the little bits on the table. So I'm cutting lots of little thin fringy bits, just like that. Okay, have my little fringy bits on the paper. You notice I didn't cut all the way up. I only cut about halfway up the paper. I only cut about halfway up the paper. And now, this is my chance to glue this around the base. There we go. Come on out. I wanna make sure not to put glue on the part where I've cut, just above it, so that the Fringy bits can still move freely, but there's glue underneath them. And then I'm gonna wrap, wrap it around the broom, the broom handle. I'm getting glue on my fingers. Are you getting glue on your fingers? <laughs> I'm also gonna put a rubber band on this part because I want it to stay together while it's drying. Okay, <laughs> this looks like the kind of broomstick that maybe somebody small would fly away on, but now we have to see if it works on the table. <gasps> Wait a second, it's actually working really well. I'm a little surprised. Well, what do you know? I made a little broom. I can sweep it right into my hand. It's definitely getting some of the little seeds. I could glue more fringy bits onto the end, make another layer if I wanted it to be even more um, efficient. But it definitely gathered some things up with my little broom. Amazing, what a great way to welcome in the Lunar New Year. That's fantastic. There's one more thing I wanna make with you, and that's to celebrate that this is 
the year of the metal ox. So we're going to make something with metal. So you might have either a tetra pack maybe of veggie broth or soy milk. Um, and if you cut it open, you'll see that it's actually lined with a, some kind of foil. And that means that it's extra important to make sure you wash these out before you put them in the recycling because it's really important that this is as easy to recycle as possible. Mining metals from the earth is a very energy intensive process. So we wanna make sure to recycle metals that we can, which means that when we have our metals at home, we wanna make use of them before we put them in the recycling. We wanna reuse what we can, reduce what we don't need, and then recycle what we no longer have a use for and can't find a use for anymore. So if you have containers like this, these make excellent planters. And I really have, I have grown some amazing herbs using planters like this. They also make great bouquet holders. They're fun to paint. You can also glue decorations on the outside. You can make a gratitude wish, wish container. There's lots of different ways to minimize our impact on the earth while appreciating the ways that nature is in our own home. So today, we actually took time to recognize that the Lunar New Year is coming. We spent time acknowledging that it's going to be the year of the ox and learning about the ruminants that chew their cud, the oxen and the cows, deer and goats are also ruminants. We are not ruminants, but we still have tension in our jaw so we can remember to relax our face and take care of ourselves as this new Lunar New Year gets welcomed in. We learned how to make cheese and how to draw our own recipe to color in later. We also learned how to make a little hand broom to sweep away sweep away what we don't want to bring into the New Year that's important to do before the New Year comes. Um, we learned about different materials in our own home that we can practice looking at differently to sweep things away, learning about how plants are in every corner of our home and how we're already connected to nature inside. And we also took time to acknowledge how this is the year of the, year of the metal ox and how the metal that we have hidden in plain sight at home is actually the beginning of many different craft projects that could be a source of fun, entertainment, and gratification that we've taken time to reuse, reduce, and recycle our very important natural materials. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked this class, I want to encourage you to visit us online as well. You can go to ymcasf.org slash classrooms for all to find more classes. From, from me to you on behalf of the YMCA of San Francisco, thank you so much for joining me during this segment where we talked about how nature is everywhere, even within our own home, learning how to make cheese, make hand brooms, and make use of metal at home too. Thank you so much and we'll see you again soon. Did you know that YMCA of San Francisco never closed? When shelter in place happened, we could no longer provide in-person programming. We quickly shifted to provide youth and family programming virtually. As early as April, we started providing on-demand activities in our YMCA of San Francisco YouTube channel. For this video, we're gonna be making a geodesic dome. Today, we're going to be making a hovercraft. The science around this activity is really awesome. In addition, we have a regular schedule of activities for our youth and families to join live. We feature read-alouds, yoga, family Zumba, arts and crafts, drawing clubs, and more. So don't miss out on our virtual youth and family offerings. Visit www.ymcasf.org for more info and class schedules.